Oh, hey, everybody. How's it going? What's up? Hey, Andy. Hey. Happy holidays. Happy Sunday. Same to you. I, uh, I, I hope everybody had a chance to uh, I don't see the, the votes are pouring in, by the way, on this poll. Um, I just wanted, you know, I wanted you to know that we, we do respond to the, you know, the demands and requests of the community. So when, when someone as significant as Randy McEntee asks, are we just here to watch Andy Dill eat? There's going to be a poll. The community will have a chance to speak. Their voices will be heard. I just want everyone to know that. Oh, my goodness. Look at you all. Smiling faces. Uh, Brooks, where are you? This is I am in my wonderful undisclosed location. Well, no, I'm in my wonderful basement because it's the only place that I have that I can keep my twin tornadoes away from my equipment. So, are those kids or like uh, uh, like Jack Russell Terriers that you're speaking of? <laughs> yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> 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 you can claim a uh, one set of them as 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 a tax deduction or as dependents, so. and the others are your kids. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> so eventually, I'm gonna get lighting and drapes and all that because you know more zoom efficient. But yeah, right now, at least I got a stand up desk. I'm excited oh, about mean, that. So, That's great. Yeah, it uh, it you push the button and it goes down. And you push the button and it goes up. So. Yeah, uh, I got one like of those. Emotional but, state too. It's uh, I don't so much stand at it. I um, put my seat up and down to match the desk. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm looking I'd at buy. buying one of those. Do you recommend a brand? Oh, hey, um, Flexi Spot. That's what Andy yes. recommended to me, and that's what I'm using. Awesome, Flexi cheap too. Spot. For what they are, they're really cheap. I mean, what was it three fifty something like that? Yeah, right. that's, I paid for mine. that's 350 US. Yeah, 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 yep. it's, it's good. I found it's the best use for solid. this is like if you have to wire anything under the desk, oh, you yeah. don't even have to get up. Yeah, it's amazing. Wait, we have a steel back. case, I like mine. <laughs> that's good. Steel case, yeah, highly recommended. Very tough. Now, you're not driving, are you, Renee? Are you, I'm passing, like operating the vehicle, so right? no. So I'm going to have to apologize for my very yeah, bouncy uh, video because um, we drive to Wisconsin every month. So this just That's happens okay. to be right during that drive time. So. Well, you can say hi to <laughs> Zeke for us. What's that? You can say hi to you Zeke, to Zeke also, for um, us. Like, hey, give us a Everyone says hello. hello. <laughs> There's been some talk on the forum about like a flame challenge. So maybe we'll distribute the recording of this and whoever can stabilize it the best will win like a, you know, <laughs> beautiful like logic phone charger here, courtesy of our friends at census.io. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I recommend using the Avid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me, I'll bust open After Effects. <laughs> yes, Tim, we've got Will and, uh, and, uh, and Grant here from, uh, <laughs> from the development What a team. shock. I hadn't <laughs> noticed. <laughs> This is where gallery view comes. Feel free. In. Speak freely, Tim. No problem. <laughs> no pressure. I think everybody should know I was joking, right? Uh, we've you know, we've now this is early. We're five minutes into the meeting and, and I've already and offended someone. You're all getting that um you're getting that uh, experience that I've had of Tim Farrell in the front row at a flame user group meeting, you know. Um I have to tell you, you know, I was I was going through uh like I was going back and looking at all the, 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 oh wait, Quinn Richardson is about to enter and he said he would be in his pajamas. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are recording and here we go. Well, he better be or be disappointed. I know. I Quinn, if you don't have pajamas on, don't turn on your camera. I'm hoping for a night, like a nightcap, you know? <laughs> It wouldn't be a holiday party if someone didn't come complain to HR. Oh, amen, brother. That's the true meaning of, of the holidays, I found. So I was going back and looking at all the Logic Lives, but then also I went down the rabbit hole because they're all in the same folder uh, on my computer. I'm going back and looking at all of the old, um, like some photos from the, the holiday parties we had at like New York user group meetings, which were epic. And I have a couple of the pictures here. In fact, this was a, this was a great one. Um, this is where, hold on. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. This is great. And you'll see there is a, I promise you, uh, there is a Tim Farrell tie into this. Um, All right, Andy, what are you eating? Because it looks tasty. It's like a music I've got um, <clears throat> some baked beans from a fried chicken place from a couple of days ago and a piece of pizza from last night. I've been moving all day, so I just like literally assembled the desk I'm sitting at about five minutes ago and then just piled food on it. And uh, that's why it's on mute because you don't need to hear me eat. But you. But we just, do need to see you eat. I, need is a strong word. <laughs> if, 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 if I don't know what the results of the poll are, but I can turn off my camera for a little bit. <laughs> Haven't we seen Andy eat before on one of these? I, it looks very familiar. I will say that. Is he always eating? Pretty much. Well. Yeah. <laughs> One of those guys. You got to feed that big, beautiful brain of yours somehow. Yeah. Amen, Sorry. brother. And that beard. So I found these pictures uh, from, this is from 2015 at a user group meeting in New York. I didn't mean to start on Joel drinking beer, but he was there. And I think that was the meeting where he showed the, uh, you can connect two things across the, the like across, uh, connect two lines in batch across across the split. This was the uh, the the year where uh, Flame on Mac, I believe, was introduced. So we had Mac set up all across the the desk here, whether it was you know the relatively new and still somewhat loved trash can Mac, and then there was a MacBook Pro. Uh, but there was a great picture. I don't know how many of you know Dino, but now you all know Dino. Uh, Ivar made a uh, uh, a little, you know, a matchbox shader slash little welcome invite for us all. Um, but there yeah. was, let's see. There's Joel, you know, with some liquid courage. This was the year we gave away the uh, the uh, the uh, what, what are the, the notebooks, Moleskine, um, uh, notebooks with the flame logo on them yeah. to a bunch of people. In fact, it was there's Tim. In the front row, poised and, and ready to criticize. Ready to pounce. It's great, right? Ready to pounce. You know, we had the um, the like a hundred flame unleashed posters that we gave away. We had Joel uh, drinking and vaping through his demo, which I think trumps Andy's baked bean and pizza, uh, you know, mix for getting through a session. But yep, we gave away all the notebooks. Tim was trying to duck out of the picture there, and then uh, I think this was Todd. Todd and Jason Dunga, but Todd won a, uh, a, a monitor from, from Misa. That was a good day. But anyway, that well, was Well, that's all. great, Andy. I, you're giving away a, a monitor today. That's amazing. Well, this, I'm showing you what we have given away in the past and what we aspire <laughs> to give away in the future. Um, but this was all sparked by my desire to show everybody a picture of Tim Farrell sitting in the front. So uh, welcome to a, a, our little holiday uh edition of Logic Live. Like I said, there's been, this is the 37th one of these. Uh, I cannot believe it's been that long. I mean, it's really, it's been about 40 weeks, you know, like we did the first one on uh, March 22nd, which is remarkable. And I have, um, I found a picture that I took of um, the setup that I had on, <laughs> on March 22nd, which, you know, this desk here, oh, and that's when, um, when one of our stuffed animals, uh, uh, Pancake, was the employee of the month at the home office. So uh, we're very proud of Pancake and all that he has accomplished. But uh, this this whole setup was dominated by like the remote setup into the flame I have at, at Lively in, in the city. And then, you know, the entire the entirety <laughs> of the Logic Live Broadcast Center was on the world's wobbliest, like I think we got this free, this table, I don't know how many years ago. Uh, and then the only microphone I had was this, you know, this shotgun mic that was, it was clamps upon clamps upon clamps, you know, <laughs> to get this thing to, to, you know, barely work. Oh, and that's right. And this was the week I tried to get a GoPro to work and it didn't. So that was maybe one of 38 audiovisual failures down the road of setting up some kind of web streaming system. But we've come a long way here. Um, where am I? Oh, there I am. Hey, now all I need are tally lights, so I know which camera to look at in here. Now that'll be our next our next upgrade. But uh, I wanted to share with you all a little bit of uh, kind of the where we've come, or how you know how far we've come with all these. 
Um, I have about a thousand screen shares to share with everybody. Um, actually, you know what might be fun? Hold on for one second. Da -da -da. Are these the rejected images from all the uh, split screens you do? Oh, no. Me, who never? There are no rejected images. It's just things we save for later. Um, hold on. Da -da -da. This is also my, this is my favorite thing in Zoom. I'm inviting my phone in so that I can show you the current setup. It's always a 73-step uh, process to invite yourself. It's almost like um, existential to like invite yourself into a Zoom meeting. There he is. Hold on, wait one second. Oh, I have to answer the poll. Um, are we here to just watch Andy? Yeah, so, oh, there I am. Oh, God, I look terrible. Two Andys for the price of one. Yeah, right. It's there it is. Right, so this is the rig. Wow, that's a legit setup now. My my MacBook Pro, that is of course you know is well ventilated somehow, buried underneath the the loud keyboard. Um, this sticker, my daughter got into um, the State Uni University of New York at Fredonia, which is called Fred. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to send this to Fred Warren at some point because <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> I want him to put it on his car. Uh, Whenever I have a prop, you know, Logic Live mask or the uh, the batteries that are there, the coffee that I have yet to spill in all these weeks, uh, the a ring light from my daughter's bedroom for when she has a Zoom class, you know, camera one. And then uh, this is my uh, my wife's laptop, the 2012 MacBook Pro that serves as the, you know, the, the, the machine that delivers the, what do we call it, the, the keynote presentations and everything. I've got it going. HDMI out to the uh, the wonderful ATEM Mini, uh, four channel in input switcher. It can do dissolves and shit. And then my stream deck here, which has all the little sound effects, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, the microphone, and then of course in the back here, you know, uh, I have this wonderful TV that's really not hooked up to anything except um, a uh, an Atmos recorder. From there feeding it whatever you know whether it's the logic live logo or or uh or in this case the yule log um and andy then, that looked like a full 12 bit signal there it's it, it not in a row uh there are 12 bits involved but they're not grouped together at all i believe that um 11 of them are red at this point and the other one is uh fire but hold on i'm going to disconnect from our incredible um sound system which i just dropped on the floor it used to be free headphones I got from Peloton. Uh, but you see here, uh, of course, there's the, uh, the plasma ball that I received as a uh, secret Santa gift one year. It's a puppet of me and my wife had a... He's forgotten that he's on the microphone. I have in the back here that are, you know, um, kind of in the candlelight. Moment. Yeah, we don't know what he's talking about. Which is supposed to be romantic, uh, but is creating that kind he's of... He's back. Um, and then, oh, I also have my assistant. You can't hear us either. <laughs> So I just realized as I was walking around the room that you probably couldn't hear me uh, because of this microphone, but you're all nodding, which means it's true. But anyway, just show of hands, did you at least see the cat who was sitting on the chair there? I heard you. Okay, good. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Love uh, the plasma ball. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, it's great. It's, uh, it actually it ties the room together is, is, is what it really is. Have you, have you set it to voice activate? Uh, no, but that's next on my list because I do have, uh, like a fool, whenever I buy something, I always buy two because why buy one? You know, you can get two for twice the price. So I do have another um, Amazon enabled smart plug. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to plug that into it and I'll, you know, give it some fancy name like flux capacitor or something like that. <laughs> but does that, does that plasma ball have a microphone in it? Because I've got oh, one does. as well, and you can yes, yes you can turn, turn it, it on. Yeah, 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 and let have it blink yeah, whilst you're talking. With my voice. Yeah. Um, so that that was the. I hope that was an, a, an impressive tour, an informative tour, of behind the scenes of like how the you know the sausage the gets made here at Logic Live Studios. Um, Andy, you didn't uh, show us your. Um, 
connection to your camera though. Don't you have a black ma some black magic thing oh. going on? Yes, that is here. You think? Because you're extravagantly using a, a DSLR. Yes, I your... have the uh, Panasonic GH4. Right, hooked up here, hooked up here to a Manfrotto Magic Arm, which defies most of the laws of physics. <laughs> Okay, it's clamped to the desk, so it goes up and down with the desk. And then, yes, I'm using the uh, Blackmagic uh, ATEM mini switcher oh, here, that's which that. has four HDMI ins and then uh, two microphone inputs. And uh, I have an HDMI out going into an HDMI splitter, which is the little red light back there, so that I can hear what's going on. And... That is, being, that is being powered by the uh, USB power output from my lamp. <laughs> it's a very high tech set <laughs> as I think about it. Do you use the ATEM for your monitoring of flame as well and the output of flame when you're doing jobs? Uh, yes and no. And the reason that's a, a complex answer is like, um, we have an RGS connection to the uh, the office here. So there is okay. an HDMI out of that. And I can right. plug that into the ATEM. It's just that the ATEM drops it to a beautiful 640 by 360, I think, <laughs> signal. <laughs> beautiful. That, that then gets fed back to my client, who so far has never complained. So, okay. uh, so that, the next time you're asked to work at something in 8K for a Snapchat delivery, you know, just remember that. So you don't run Flame on locally. You run Flame through the RGS from the office. Yeah, right. I have it. I have it for Mac also on the on the MacBook Pro here, but I'm not using anything to monitor it at this point. Right. And I don't think the ATEM would do that. I think this is pretty much just a switcher. Hey, I just had my first RGS experience this week. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Going longer, ladies and gentlemen. The audience loves you. I, I found it uh, remarkably frustrating. Oh. Um, um, because it was a timeline job and it was so unbelievably buggy. I could just look at the keyboard and a clip would jump out of place. Oh, no. Ugh. Is that is that standard or was this a particularly bad experience? I think you've paid you might have paid extra for that. No, we found I mean, I know I found with uh at Lively we we have a Teradici uh, like PC IP connections. We we had those for a while at the beginning of the lockdown and then we switched over. Jeff, do you remember when they started rolling That's out RGS? Had. Um I'm not sure. Maybe like at the beginning of the summer. I'm, okay. That sounds right. I found them to be to be a much better experience. Really? RGS, yeah, the picture's better. Uh, but I mean, the also the like we, we were having trouble with um, with keyboard shortcuts too, Jeff. Right? Yeah, there were just a few of them that were just weird. Like, um, what was that? I can't remember any off the top of my head right now. But you didn't have like this oversensitivity uh, where you would touch a clip and it would jump to another level or further down the timeline or no oh huh. what and keyboards are you using tim you're on mute yeah we're hearing you tim through joanne which is <laughs> as it should be typical as it should be <laughs> <laughs> ask what kind yeah. of keyboard you're i mean it could have, uh, it tim could have tim wants to know about. what kind of keyboard you're using Oh, I'm sporting uh, the Logitech K840 uh, from Logitech. I wonder if it's a wired keyboard. Yeah, it's, you, um, you, it's too bad Suzanne well. Sharping isn't in here because she has an experience like you've had, Joanne. She had yeah. very bad experiences. Like, I think it has to do with you know, you've had share. She like huh. you know, it took her an entire day. I think the. Uh, she would tap the tablet down. The clips would jump around the frame. Um, it, there was a lot of lag. Like she had just, it was a nightmare. And she goes, depending on the sysadmin you have on the other end, helping you get set up with this experience, it can either be really smooth or it can be a nightmare. Ah. So 
Interesting. Maybe I'll, I know Suzanne, maybe I'll chat with her about it. Yes. I think your mileage is going to vary that you're working with a place that you got on a regular basis that you're dialed in and it's right. working and dialed in that is a unique experience because if you work at a different facility it's going to be a whole nother ball of wax this and was reinventing a, the wheel all over again this was a new facility i'd never worked with before that well, also I think you might want to reach out to suzanne <laughs> also another frustrating thing was the real estate on the screen you, um, I couldn't like, um, I could only move the windows so far, like in general, I, I like to do like Tim Farrell has shown me where I make the image window very small so I can see all the timeline nice and big. And I, I couldn't ever get the window small enough to be able to enlarge the timeline big enough. I mean, I got through the job and it went well, but I wasn't a happy camper at all. Sorry. I'd ask for your money back. That's for sure. Any, nobody else has this experience. I know that there were some, um, it's not, it's not the technology. It's just that it's, the, there's so many, everything is custom and different. Like it's, it's not, it's not the technology. It's the implementation. Okay. And so it's tricky. It's there tricky. Are like of, the, there are a lot of variables too. Like I think yeah, your, your internet speed is one variable. The, the internet speed of the place you're connecting to is another variable. Oh, and, the and configuration. Tim. Tim thinks it's because I'm using a Mac keyboard. Could that be a factor? No, you just have to relearn your option in Alt that gets flopped around. Because you're controlling a Linux because you're controlling a Linux machine. Yeah, yeah. I know that so. that's a, uh, or I believe anyway that there was a problem too, like with the tablet. If uh, you needed to be, if you're connecting to a Linux machine, you needed to have a Linux machine on your end at home in order for like the tablet to work correctly. Is that something yeah. that? Okay. That could be the problem because I'm on Mac and there are the people I were connected people I was connecting to were Linux. Oh yeah, well. I'll check that out. See what they say. But I think Renee makes a very valid point too. If it's a there's got to be a very different experience. I find my, that I feel a little spoiled sometimes, you know, having uh, the same place. To, I mean, it's a there's an always on connection to one place, you know. Right. It's the downside of freelancing is, is you know, yeah. every new job is like going out on a blind date. <laughs> you just don't know what you're going to get. You just don't right? know what you're going to get, huh? That's right. Or if you're even going to like them. Or if you're ever going to want to see them again, you know? <laughs> or if they're going to pay you. That's right. <laughs> That's the, the Who's paying for is. this? <laughs> Blind date is to... the best analogy. Analogy. What's that, Yuri? Blind date is the best analogy ever. Yes, thank you. I use it a lot. I prefer to go steady with my clients. I, I don't want to get married, though. <laughs> Same here. Oh, I thought the story was bad. <laughs> I. Uh... As long as you don't get to second base with your clients, you're all right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Um, I'm just trying to give you an excuse to use all those buttons on your stream deck. I know you've gotten to the third page. So we've got the laugh track. We're waiting for what? The Jeopardy theme? I know you've got the Jeopardy theme lined up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Randy. All right. Um, let me show you guys one more little story. <clears throat> that was pretty awesome. I, got, I, I wanted to look at the... Um, analytics for all the logic live stuff. So these are just all the videos that I've put up on the YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel. And just to see that they've been viewed 22,000 times uh, since we've been doing this is just is pretty wild. So I just wanted to thank everybody for, you know, for just being so supportive and for uh, giving the great feedback and for all of you who are on here uh, on the stream today who have been a part of, of Logic Live, who have been a guest, or you know, were a contestant on, on uh, One Frame of White or something like that. So I wanted to thank you all very much because it would really be nothing without all of you. So here's a virtual round of applause to send to everybody. <laughs> now, I see with us today we have Tim Hendricks, winner of One Frame of White, 2020. Hello. Hey, Tim. How's it going, man? 
It goes. Uh, we actually, it took me and Jack like three months to get the machine working, but we got it. We got flame running on unsupported hardware. So, oh, and it actually works really well. Uh, I actually can turn it around. Here it is in its new home. There it is. Um, got a, but yeah, I <laughs> got thank next you the for Apple II, with the Apple two C. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that a, so is that a ducky keyboard? Showing usage stats on the, on the Dell. So oh, that's, that's the NVIDIA. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I've developed a lot of psychotic hobbies in quarantine. But um, yeah, no, it's um, much nicer than my 2012 MacBook that the entry was done on, um, in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, so, so thank you guys again for, <laughs> for running that contest. It's uh, pretty life-changing having a machine that works, <laughs> you know, for like home use and stuff. Amen. What have you been... Uh, have you? What have you... What have you been doing with it? Do you have anything? You can I do? mean, so I've been, you know, I've been doing kind of the same old shit for the most part. Uh, what you saw on the screen was um, just, uh, a project I'm doing in my spare time that like, uh, it's kind of leftover footage from a video the artist ended up not using that I directed. But um, I'm also, I'm, I'm using it to uh, learn Blender and stuff like that. So, cause I've never really delved into CG before. And I just figure like, well, I got nothing but time. Me as well, you know? Um, and yeah, it also runs the shit out of Doom, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how that's does Cyberpunk Doom. 2077 look on it? That's what I want to know. I'm like tempted to find out, but I also don't want to give that company my money. Uh oh. Uh oh. We lost your we We're lost your mic. Your sound. Jiggle the cable. Maybe somebody from somebody from Sony who is, doesn't want anyone to hear his actual <laughs> <Yeah>. thoughts on <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077. There you go. All right, you hear me again? Yeah, you're good. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm curious to try that game. I've I've committed to finishing the games I already have purchased before I buy that one. But uh, maybe by the time I finish uh, the Doom games, Cyberpunk will actually run. We'll see. <laughs> Tim, did you say Jack helped you? Yeah, Jack and uh, Jack Sean Horrocks? Wellbridge. Is it Jack, Jack Horrocks? Ha yeah, Jack Horrocks. And, uh, oh, okay, are you in, where, where are you in the world? Well, I'm in LA, so Jack hooked me oh, up with okay. Sean at um, Blur, and, and he helped me get, like, we installed, like, some more SSDs and stuff, and, like, just to get CentOS to boot, which was the main hurdle. But um, the only thing that doesn't work is um, the networking card isn't supported yet, and this version of CentOS, but I just found, like, a $40 specialty Wi-Fi adapter that goes in USB, and it just works fine now. But uh, I also got a really obnoxious customized keyboard with the penguin on the apple key <laughs> good for really you cool. i like it yeah well, that's Ooh, the man. tour of my my little cave i guess that i'm uh riding out the apocalypse in <laughs> aren't we all aren't yeah. we all? <laughs> oh that's great yeah no i'm uh <laughs> i don't know it's a cool contest i mean i was really impressed with all the entries it's good content as they say amen Nice oh, Christoph's joined, and nice uh, oh, Amanda's here. Hey, how's it going? What's Hello. up? Going really good. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the party. Yeah. Happy holidays. Um, what I would like to do for a few minutes is uh, I'm going to put everybody into breakout rooms, like smaller groups, so we have a chance to to chat uh, just for a few minutes, and then everybody will bounce back here, and we'll continue. So, buckle up your seatbelts, friends. Um, and here we go. Ready? Oh, here they come. Here's everyone again. Yeah. Hello. 22. Welcome back. Amanda, big fan. Big fan. Yes. Big fan. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, a huge, one of the huge things that came about this year was the forum. And uh, our good friend Randy McEntee is here. And uh, Randy, you have some updates on the forum you want to share with everybody? Oh, yeah. I was actually, I, I was going to plan something. And then I realized at 3 o'clock p.m. that it was 4 o'clock Eastern. So I, I kind of kind of dropped the ball on some of my more specific things. But um, no, I, I think I just wanted to kind of just share some of the bigger you know, there's been a lot of amazing things on it. Like there's, we have over 850 uh, members. 
Um, this month has been our busiest month since One Frame of White, um, when everyone from uh, when everyone's parents and aunts and uncles and neighbors were signing up to help vote for them. Um, so yeah, this month we're on track for like 65,000 uh, page views a month, which is great. Um, I think there's a lot of activity. There's between 50, like 45 and 55 active users a day, which is great. There's always some around. Like I, I, I have this weird COVID sleeping problem where I can't sleep and I just, I just log on, I see who's active and there's always like 10 or 15 or 20 people that are active at like one in the morning, two in the morning. I can see when like the Aussies are getting up and the Kiwis are, are getting up. <laughs> and then, you know, all the, all of our West coast friends are staying up late. So um, no, it's been a lot of positive things. I think, um, you know, with, with, with the year and it being, you know, just a, an absolute roller coaster of emotions with there being high highs and low lows. I think a lot of people are starting to figure out, okay, shit, well, you know, this doesn't last forever. And what are, what are we going to do about it? Um, a lot of people are helping. A lot of people are pitching in and, and caring, which is awesome. I think that there's, there's more people saying that they want to do stuff. And I think that's what, um, I think that's what our 2021 is, is to figure out what exactly do we want and how can we be better members of the community? How can we engage better with our peers, with our, with, with, with Will and his team, um, and just, and just be better at this whole community thing. Um, I think step one is, is kind of happening where we just show up, which has been amazing. Step two is kind of organizing a little bit, looking for all the helpers. And then step three is like, okay, like, you know, what actually do we want? Um, Cause I think we're good at getting what we want. We just need to figure that out. So that's, that's kind of all I had just to- uh, up pretty quick. I have to, not to congratulate myself overtly, but I did you know, that poll about, are we watching Andy eat? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we ever saw the results of that. Are you able to oh, share that? Didn't? Well, that's oh, yeah, no, 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 yeah, we didn't see the results. I'd like to know. Right, well, I think we'd rather watch Andy eat than anyone else drink, right? I mean, that's just a little <laughs> awkward, awkward, so. The results. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's conclusive, everybody. We'll have a new segment on for 2021. It'll be called Lunchtime with Andy Dill. Yeah, just on mute, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a quick question. I, wait, I thought it was Andy Milkus we were going to watch eat. Oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, Joanne wants no. her money back. Yeah. Uh, I have a quick question for Randy. Now. Hey, what's up? Sorry. I'm sorry, Joanne, but thank you for playing. Um, when we upload stuff through the portal, the new mm -hmm. portal, mm -hmm. where does it go to? Where is it getting saved? It's actually a great question. It doesn't go anywhere on my server, on our servers. It's um, uh, Michael Vagliani. He's set up a, 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 a basically a server that this stuff goes to, and it just gets redirected. Um, so, yeah. I think there's like, there's a lot of little individual pieces. I think, um, I think eventually there's, there's an opportunity for, uh, this is an awful word, uh, consolidation of tech. Um, you know, if we have a place that's, that's, that's a forever home that, you know, like, I mean, I'm looking at the statistics now we've used one meg of like 10 gigs of storage on, on the forum. So there's like room to grow and, <clears throat> yeah. But we start adding batch setups and any images that go along with it, that's going to go real fast. Well, the images, I mean, I don't know if the images even go. I think that's the other tricky part. Um, but it's like, look, I think it's baby steps. And I think, like, you know, we didn't have it a few months ago. Let's use it and see what makes sense. Does it, yeah. Does it make sense to do other things? Like, do you want to do an archive or a batch effect or, you know, any, you know, whatever? There's just, like what's helpful and we have a little bit of infrastructure to play with and to use and, and inconvenience some electrons for your benefit. So um, there's no real wrong answers. I think we just need to start using it and figure out what works and if it doesn't bail and reassign resources and, and make the world a better place. You know, there was a great thread uh, last week about um, like the, the logic uh, matchbooks sorry, matchbox shaders, mm. you know, and kind of, it was, it, it, it started kind of smaller about like, what was it called? It was called like the legacy. Hold on. I'm just trying to bring the page up here. Yeah. Well, John, John Thornton brought it up and he's, he and I, 
I've known him for a long time. He's been at the mill for, oh my gosh, 20, at least 20 years now. Um, and I think, look, he, he raised some really good questions. And I think, you know, and then, you know, Ulick chimes in and, and, you know, I think it's all, you know, it's all, you know, we're, we're not guaranteed, no, no, nothing's guaranteed, right? Um, and I think that that just asks, that requires really interesting questions. Um, you know, nothing to get too deep into in a holiday party, but, um, you know, 2021 has got to be a big year for us. And we got to figure out and make some decisions and, and get organized and chip in. Um, yeah. I would just encourage everybody, if you haven't already, to just check out this thread here on the forum. Um, and, you know, give it some thought and, uh, and give some feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many people chimed in. And I think it's, you know, with, with, with many of the members of our community no longer with us, I think it just asks questions. Like I, I only know one person that's retired from being a flame artist, um, you know? So like we're, we're getting up there. <laughs> so far. So far. Well, that got really serious, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd okay. love to see a lot of Thanks, new blood Ronnie. come in. What's that, John? I'd like to see a lot of younger people take on flame. Mm -hmm. Somehow yeah. get it into the educational institutions and just it's got to start from there, I think, because Resolve's doing that and that's they're doing an, you know, an all-round package of getting in there at the entry level because it's free. Also, well, so is Flame. Flame's free for education as well. But mm -hmm. I don't know, it just needs to, the teachers need to grasp as well they need to think, you need to get the the tutors on board i don't i think flame it's also still got the i don't know if cachet is the right word but it's definitely a mysterious thing that a lot of people still ask me what is it i don't quite understand it it's it's i don't know if the lead is still think the thing but like it seems like it's not approachable or usable by just anybody and so that is just makes it not super inviting to new people because it's still exactly. a mystery a lot of people are like oh, i'm just gonna do nuke and and they don't understand the draw or they don't understand the difference of what it is and there's also so much to being a flame artist that i think it scares a lot of people off because you are the ringleader the circus leader the magician the all the things and maybe that's just a lot of pressure that people don't want or want, understand mm -hmm. so i think i having yeah. the ability to to mentor someone in those positions like you know when how people are in the room with you and have the person they're seeing it's like showing them what it is not just telling them but like having the kind of warm-up seat that you can be there and ha with the person leading the room and seeing what they're doing so that you can be like oh that's what this is I think unless we get back to that environment, the new people aren't going to really get it, and there'd be no but, reason mm -hmm. for them to do it, you know. Yeah. But also, F flame is all flame has started as a high end system, so for education to take it on board, it it was too high of a level to get into. But now, because all the editorial features have come in, you know, from smoke, now we can get the younger guys that are have only spent 10 minutes in front of Final Cut, you can get them across over to just do basics on Flame just and then let them take it from just the basic cut and paste and put a few titles and graphics and that, and then they can dive deeper because the depth is there, you know, start mm -hmm. from the beginning. And that, that's not happening in education over here. Um, they, they're just falling automatically over to Premiere, you know, or Final Cut Pro, you know, well, or even now it's, it's going to be resolved. Like, yeah, why would they? Easier. Like, why the should they? Right. But what's the reason for them to choose Flame because over those other things? Because the teachers don't know anything about Flame over here. They, you ask, I've asked designers, uh, not designers, um, you know, university uh, teachers that, you know, have you tried looking at Flame? And they go, what's that? Mm -hmm. They go, what do you mean? Oh, I, that? You I, know what it I is. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's awesome. Obviously, I'm a fan, but I think a lot of people are like, it's too complicated and why should I when I can do this other thing that's easier and simpler? You know, I think that this is a big bite for people to chew. What, what happened? John makes a, point a, a couple of years ago, like, I took, uh, oh, sorry. Joy. Okay. A couple of years ago, I did took a weekend workshop to learn After Effects because I thought I would be interested. Actually, it was about 10 years ago. And on the first day of the 
class, um, we were introducing ourselves and I told the teacher I was a flame artist and he said, oh, an old schooler. What, what happens, at least in Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> True story. The trombone would show up. What, what happens like a lot in Brazil is that a lot of the newcomers, the uh, or at least or at least people who comes from After Effects or things like that, they want to learn Nuke because that's what uh, the feature film in the U.S. uses more. So flame is a lot for advertising and usually people don't want to start and talk about advertising and things like that. And there's also, as Renee said, the, there's a lot of fear when they see the, the interface for the first time. So kind of a prejudice. I, I don't see a lot of people in Brazil, at least, uh, learning flame. There's a few a few facilities that are training some new guys, which is really mm. cool. I, I bumped into a few of them. But other than that, by themselves, is not happening a lot, which I think is odd because the Autodesk uh, learning channel is way, it has so much content that no, no, there's no free content for learning Nuke as there is for Flame. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, the, the, the free, the free learning software. The... I think this is a huge um, kind of area of interest of, of mine. And I think working at a big facility where it was, you know, we needed to train juniors because we just had a people problem. Um, and then the, the, the globalization and the outsource of a lot of, you know, junior roto and paint tests, you know, that's, this is, so all this kind of combines plus COVID lockdown, you know, all this stuff combined. So, Look, there's so many opportunities for us to, to chip in and help out. Um, and so that's, you know, this is a huge part of what I think 2021 could mean for us and, and our legacy of logic for lack of a better phrase. But, you know, can we look into, um, you know, subsidizing hardware, software licenses and grants and shipping kids, you know, stuff like a Pelican case full of whatever, like there's just so much stuff. We just need to help connect some dots. So those are all things that we're thinking about that, you know, if we had a little bit of organization, you know, we all have the resources to make that happen. So, you know, if you're really passionate about some of the stuff, get in touch with me and um, we'll kind of put some committees together and, and move it forward because there's, you know, there's lots to do, right? Also, with some I of the remote connectivity, do we need to ship anything around? Is it a matter of trying to figure out and coordinate more remote login connections and things like that? Because, you know, localized hardware is becoming less of a necessity. It's true. Funny you should mention that. I'm uh, testing something like that on my end. And um, once the permits come through and weird construction happens and my neighbors don't hate me for digging up their backyards, um, I'll be able to offer that. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an option. Um, but there's also a big cost and, and, you know, cool, but yeah, that could be, that could work too. It's funny. I was, I, I used to teach flame or was Flint at the time, you know, there was a lab at NYU in their midtown campus. I mean, this is, I mean, Joanna, you, you probably remember, right. Um, I mean, this was in the nineties, like the, the, or the late nineties. I used to teach there with Mindy. Uh, oh, you're muted. You're muted and we can't hear you through Tim. Wait, where, where was this? This was at NYU had a campus, right? Oh, at, yes, um, yes, yes, at, yes. Uh, at the park. Oh, why can't I think of the park? You know, by the library on 42nd. Bryant, Bryant, Bryant Park. park. Right. And, Mindy uh, taught, taught there also? Years. Yeah, that's how we met. She was the TA assigned to me the first year that I taught. And then she started teaching right after that. Charles Quinn used to teach there. Um, had no Gavin idea. Gary used to teach there. And at the time, you know, it was, it was kind of, it was amazing. There were like three rooms full of, uh, either one room had O2s, like SGI O2s, and, and the other two had, uh, they must have been like Indigos or something. But there, there were three labs that had, I think, Alias and then and then uh, Flint on them. And I remember when that whole thing went, like wound down, it was because the hardware was too expensive. That that barrier, of course, is gone because we can run Flame on, on anything right now. You know, so it is certainly something that... Uh, I think interesting what... That really would help actually is um, Hi, if we could sorry I think what would really really help is some kind of cu curriculum some kind of really to get youngsters started because flame is so big and diverse and so many areas 
that you really give some, them something at hand. Like if you're coming from a grading aspect, start out at the effects tab. If you start getting from editing, you start out at the desktop and so forth and so forth. Because as good as all the resources are, they're very particular and they, what they don't really teach you is an overwhelm, uh, overarching uh, concept of what Flame really is. This is something to this date that you still have to learn person to person. And this is something that that something like the Flame Learning Channel can't really can't really uh, um, compensate, in my opinion. But there's lots of good uh, FX PhD introduction courses. Of, on yeah, Flame. if only if only Maybe we were joined by someone that was funny. really good at teaching FX PhD classes. <laughs> oh, I'm flushing here. Thank God, I'm, I've got the camera turned off. <laughs> Well, well no, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question as, as, as the representative of the learning channel. Um, one, one idea I've been playing with a lot is to create a set of very, very basic training. And we're talking way below the level of a mid-range or even advanced flame artist, really starting from the very, very beginning. And it's explaining... This is, this is Flame, this is what it does, this is what the interface is, this is how you use it, but on a really, really, let's say user-friendly, more colloquial level. Would that be something that would suffice? Because obviously, you know, in these day and ages, it's very difficult to attend classes. So, I mean, the majority of the way people are learning these days is, is pretty much online. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm, curi I'm curious, you know, yes. if I was to produce something that was really simple, really easy? I don't think that's the problem. I think it's mm -hmm. getting in at, at the teaching level. The teachers need to introduce flame to the students. The student is smart enough today to just grasp the basics of flame if they've come from looking at Final Cut or if they've looked at Premiere. They, they've seen a timeline by the time they've started their course, you know, their design course. They've been playing around in that area now, you know, it's not like when we were kids, everything was so brand new, you know, like now my son knows how to edit on his iPhone. So he, he knows what a timeline looks like. He knows that he wants to put three clips together. So you just got to take that knowledge and, and apply it to flame. I don't believe it's that hard now. And there's a lot of your resources and, and Christopher's resources now to just to, to learn that, you know, the exact button to push to get, where you want to get they've already got it in their head that they know they've got to put things together i think they've already learned that i, so I agree i i teach nuke at a, a school here in hamburg and i i met the same resentments that some of you guys mentioned that it's like yeah but it's hard to maintain it's hard it's expensive it's hard to to uh, it's it's not running on windows and all these kind of excuses because they they've got Macs everywhere and they could install Flame without an issue. It's just you needed to get it into the facilities, uh, into the, the um, university's hands. You ne need to get people there that know and love Flame. And I always, when I teach Nuke, I always sneak in one course where I say, yeah, let's, let's take a look at the other tools and I'll show them Flame, of course. Uh, and I, some of them are quite interested, actually. But I think you need really to, what, what, the foundry did a couple of years ago and what resolve is doing now you get you need to get into the educational in, uh, institutes to really hook the people i'm totally on board with that yeah. we've so I've, I've got a lot of experience dealing with um educators and administrators at universities so kind of in each major market i've been at, at a large facility we've 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 done a ton of outreach because when you work at a big facility and they grow 30 40 percent every year they need hundreds of new hires every year, um, not just in flame and, you know, across the whole spectrum, but I don't think this, I don't necessarily think, I, I think that's part of it, but that's, I don't think that's the end all be all. I don't no. universities and the, and, the, and, the, and the professors are, are under incredible strain. And especially since after the kind of 08, 09 crash, there's just like most of the, of the creative, um, most of the creative um, uh, liberal arts colleges are, I mean, their enrollment is, is cut third, between 30 and 60% in the last decade. So they have zero, they just have half the number of kids coming through and, and, you know, parents aren't forking over hundreds of thousands of dollars for their kids to study video. I mean, it's just not really happening right now. So well, I think it's yeah. a, it's a bigger, bigger picture, bigger, pro bigger problem. 
Yeah. What what I think might be interesting is if um, Autodesk were to put something together in which you could run an educational version of Flame online um, and maybe just use the same uh, uh, sources and stuff that Grant is using in the demos so that you can practice along a bit online without actually having to have Flame local on the machine you're working on. I think um, from what I know about uh, college professors, my, both my parents were teachers and I have a, um, a brother who's a college professor, not in, um, in graphics or anything, but um, I think generally, and I, I don't want to be rude about teachers, uh, but they, they, it's probably because they're under a lot of pressure to, to uh, you know, stick to their um, curriculum. Uh, but it's like they're not, uh, they're, they don't want to have to learn something new. So if they, if they don't already know Flame, if they don't ha already have a, um, a predisposition to adopt Flame, maybe the, the thing that Autodesk should be doing is bringing in, um, you know, educators and, you know, training them a little bit on Flame, giving them um, a taste of what Flame, why Flame is a unique um, way of working and so they don't automatically go to their you know their usual thing they, they maybe bring that into their syllabus um you know and uh, maybe but, but is that another that's what, i think i think is, what that's what john is talking about mm -hmm. is like getting it into the universities it's n it's not about you know get engaging the students because the students do whatever the you know, curriculum. Oh, required. yes and no. Some students are looking at courses going, well, I want to, I want to learn Adobe because everybody else is learning Adobe. So right. if they see that there's a specific course on Flame, they go, well, what's Flame? Oh, how many facilities are running Flame? And right. if there's only five in Sydney, then they're going to go, oh, you know what? I want to learn, I want to learn After Effects because right. everybody's yeah. learning After Effects. Right. This is something this this is something that we've thought about a lot, Andy and I in Logic, and we've identified a few people that are that are interested in in creating some kind of structured something, um, whether or not that's just a syllabus or curriculum of of the things that are out there or just a roadmap. Um, you know, those are all things that are that are, you know we're thinking about that are interesting. Um, and if someone's has ideas or is passionate about stuff, like get a hold of me soon because. You know, that's definitely something that I think we can look at because I don't, I, I would argue that that's, that that's not an Autodesk problem. Um, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but um, I think well, that's, there, yeah, I mean, I mean it, it is a problem if, if, it, if it doesn't uh, have momentum, if the, if, if their customer base doesn't have momentum because they're just not young people using it and we yeah. all retire and, and, and you know suddenly there's nobody to run it and it, it, it could become on Autodesk probably. Yeah, and that's right. What's it's in like, it for the universities? You know, if, if Autodesk could say, we'll set you up a lab, we'll set you up the, the, the teacher and we'll, we'll do it at no cost type of thing just to get, just to get it, uh, the educators teaching it, you know, getting it in there. Like, it's like resolve, it's, it's free. It's kind of difficult though. Like, so I'm working as a junior and... It would have been awesome to have Flame back at uni, um, but you can get away with it in London because you will start as a runner anywhere and you can still pick it up. Well, what I'm struggling with right now during the pandemic is that people don't really want to pay enough to run a Flame to do the simple jobs. So, you know, if it's just like just some bit of roto or clean up, which a junior could easily do, they're just like, oh, so can you do it on you or After Effects because it's cheaper for us? So, you know, loads of stuff I end up having to do in Nuke, even though I know like Flame would be way faster because they just refuse to have the budget for it. Even though Nuke is and more like, expensive to license. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. just, just going to say that. <laughs> like, I was bad. just going to say that. We, when we, when we upgraded our, uh, our Flame systems at Lively, that was a conversation I had with the boss. You know, it was, she said, uh, she thought that the, you know, the, what looked at the estimate thought the estimate was too high and as looked the most expensive thing on the list here is the hardware i mean the software is nukes, nukes got was, an indie license you know? it's easy what's that nukes got an indie license though oh yeah they did just drop that indie license i forgot about which that which is yeah. which is competing is with it's competing with um, adobe 
Yeah, but for me here, for instance, somebody told me about, uh, spoke to me about working with Nuke on the indie license, but I had, but they wanted the scripts to to make uh, sweet to to do any kind of work after I'm done, and they couldn't yeah. because the the indie version doesn't transfer. doesn't doesn't transfer. So for me, for instance, it's just not worth it to use. The it's indie true. Version. Like I take so many issues with it. I would love to be back on Flame. Just <laughs> tell my clients it's better. <laughs> There's a lot of disinformation that needs to be fought and undone that's built up over the years because of Flame's historic reputation. And, uh, and that's unfortunate yeah. where a lot of it still is. And a lot of it's education, even to the producers, because they've been now, you know, they'll throw it to Nuke because they think it's cheaper because historically it was. And yeah. really it kind of isn't. And uh, the other thing I think is a big part of the education is a lot of times Flame artists or operators, however you want to term us, um, you know, everybody's there because you kind of worked your way there. So there's already, for most, there's an embedded bit of knowledge that a lot of times, you know, nuke people who, you know, not necessarily, not to disparage them necessarily, but a lot of them are just sat into the seat without any foreknowledge. It's kind of, a, you know, they'll know a few buttons to press and how to get to the roto node and things like that. But they may not know about, you know, the million other things that you need to know to get through a job, get a job done, hand it off and to kind of produce it in the end. So I think I think there's a lot of informational bits that uh, need to be sorted out. I think I think honestly, part of it for me is it feels like um, it's also uh, it's like a stigma kind of thing, like you guys were saying. Like people for some reason have this kind of stigma that flame still is really expensive and that it's only for commercials. And I think what at the core of that for me a problem with the with that is that. Um, it's kind of like a, it's almost like a marketing thing. Like it, 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 it seems like the software itself seems like it has some kind of antiquated reputation of being like an old school commercial VFX tool um, when I don't really see it that way. And to speak on what you guys were talking about before, like it, um, I had, I reached out to, or no, a school reached out to me actually about doing online course for them. And I was trying to figure out how to do an online course with Flame that would be like exciting to like young kids. And I think part of the problem we have is that the content that we have for people learning Flame, it just seems like it, it's very software and the package and uh, driven when we, it, I feel like it would be better served to reaching a wider audience if it was kind of like content and more contemporary. Um, the idea I had for this class, which I pitched to the school, was to create like a curriculum that was based around TikTok videos. So I don't know if you guys have seen like those TikTok YouTube stars that do these like little YouTube like VFX tricks where they like go into the monitor or they snap their fingers and like an egg turns into a coin. Brilliant. Yeah, like these magic trick things. And I think that from a content standpoint makes way more sense because if you're trying to reach out to young kids, they just want to see something that's cool online and they'll find out, oh, the person that did this is using, oh, the software Flame. I just, I can download an education license and learn it. And once you hook them with something that's like, they can make a cool YouTube video that they could post online. And then that gets them into the rabbit hole of like, oh, this person's using the software and they're posting all these packages. Uh, they're using this package to do all these tools. Obviously they're gonna go with that to create it. And I think for me, my mindset was like, that seemed like kind of how, if you guys remember, like, I mean, he's still around obviously, but like how Andrew Kramer really drew people into After Effects when he was doing those tutorials was, you would see these videos online with like lens flare videos and like the shatter effects. And you couldn't, you didn't know how this stuff was happening or who was doing it, where it was doing. You found out, Oh, this guy's using after effects and he's, he's creating all this stuff, but he's grounding it in things that kids want to be doing right now, or filmmakers want to be doing right now, instead of focusing so much on soft on like the software and the buttons and shit, like, 
part of my friend, she might give a fuck about the buttons and shit. People want to get excited about the the videos that they can make and share and send to their friends. So I think that in my mind is how you get more people stop worrying so much about the buttons and worry more about like selling flame as like, this is the thing you can use to make these fun ass TikTok videos and post that content online and get it to go viral and get kids to look at it and be like, Oh, that's how I do that TikTok video. You know, like that's like a little niche. I feel like right now that like, that's why I thought of it. And I pitched it to them and she pitched it, asked the kids, like, would you guys want to learn how to make these TikTok videos? And they lost their minds. They were like, yes, so excited to do it. They wouldn't give a shit what the software was. I thought I told them I could have been using, you know, like Photoshop. They would be like, I want to learn how to use Photoshop to make these fun videos, you know? And I think that's what in my mind is more of the focus. I'm developing the curriculum right now. And I'm actually, I actually was working with, I'm actually working with uh, some of you guys in Autodesk to use some educational licenses to do this. Um, uh, and, and yeah, and, and I think that's really how you approach it, you know, like, cause I think it's more complicated. Like all of you guys said, I think it's not only, yeah, you want to get it into the um, universities, but also you want flame to have a broader appeal. And I think the way you get that broader appeal is by, making like showing the things that are being done with it are sexy and cool and fun you know nobody wants to sit there and like look at you know like button pushing and like oh man this is how you get the motion vector to get like no offense grant on here i hope grant doesn't get mad at me (laughs) this is how you get like you know a sign to stick onto the side of a person's face that's kind of cool but like I want to be the next kids want to be like the next YouTube star. Help me make some videos that'll make me like a YouTube star or show me some tricks that'll help save a bunch of time and make it fun and cool. And you know, that kind of like Andrew Kramer style. And I feel like, like you guys were saying before, we have such strong content technically, as far as getting an artist to be good at what they're doing. And Hey, how do you, how do you use like planar tracking to like stabilize something and fix like a, a car paint on a car, you know, like, or reflections on a car, but that's just not hot. Like people are not gonna, kids aren't gonna go online and be like, oh yeah, like when's the next time I can paint out a car reflection on a shot? Like, you know, it's not, they're not Googling how to, how do you fix a reflection on a car? You know, they're Googling like magic trick videos and like. Yeah, I agree with you, like man, that. so much on that. That's a really good one. That was something that I wanted to pitch to. Um, I went to school at Specs Howard School of Media Arts in Southfield, Michigan, Renee. Um, and one of the things that they were doing, they were starting to get some classes together, just like you were saying. And one of the things that I wanted to pitch to them was like, you know, Matchbox for this kind of stuff that you were talking about. Instead of like A2 yeah. Beauty, it's like the T2 shader, you know, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, there's something that they can easily go through and do and that they have controls at the bottom that, you know, they can adjust yeah. with as well. But it's got to be super easy. To be. Amaze yeah. your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Right, jump totally. into a puddle and the puddle swallows you. It's amazing. How does this exactly. work? Yeah, like that. Totally. yeah they and want to do like, that. And the, I'm and the doing like light the beam is coming down. Like they yeah. want to be able to do that stuff All super that stuff. easy. And I'm doing like the sweeping and yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm doing like a little course for that for the school, and I'll I'll let you guys know how it goes. I feel like it's being well received, and if it does well enough, I might just post it online for like just people to look. But I think if you do that, center it more in the content, and then the package is like, hey, I use flame to do this because it's faster it's better it does this and this you've already got them you know like yeah i got your back man i think that's really yeah it's a good idea for sure thanks and then eventually it's just a big e-sport where we or when we go to when we get out of when we go to vegas next like we'll have like 10 kids all like cage match yeah. like hunger game style doing fucking tiktoks in under 15 minutes yeah and we're selling selling tickets for 100 bucks a pop like why not I'll be in it. I'll do it. I would I'm love down. that. I would love that. You should do like a flame Olympics, you know, give them like three pieces of footage and you got like 10 minutes to make something cool. You know, that would be fun. Like so, anything just, I think we're just, as far as like content and positioning ourselves as like a software platform, but also as an artist and content creators, we're really far behind on, on that side than what 
Yeah, we're um, too busy painting out dogs' balls. I mean, it's like, you know? Yeah, exactly. Just like, you know? What's wrong with cats and dogs? But also, too, we have the one frame of white for, I think, you know, for the artists. But maybe we could do something even on a bigger scope where, like, it'll be, like, either on the Autodesk page, the Logic Live yeah. page. Like it, like, it has to be something that's a little bit more in everybody else's face. Because right now, I think it, it's a little bit on a smaller group. And I think once we are able to blast that out to, like, a bigger base, I think people probably catch on to it more, too. Yeah. I think the problem yes, is very mindset. much so. I think. Yeah, go for it, Renee. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I was just going to say a lot of the things that we do to like be excited about flame are inward directed. And I think we mm -hmm. need to shine that light outside. We need to be like, look how excited we are to do this. Check it out, everybody. Yeah, like, I was bring more people marketing in. marketing marketing yeah and i think even from a, a, what, what would be clever is like from a standpoint of like a user base when we're creating stuff shift the mindset from like oh like and not saying that like i don't care about artists i, I mean i'm an artist i love artists but like it should be uh customer facing like you should be like okay this is like when we're creating one frame white how could we make this as a thing that would entice or excite customers as well like for us we nerd out on the one frame of white stuff because we're artists and it's like artist facing but it should also be you should be thinking that how can we make this so it's more customer facing not only artist facing you know um yeah i, think I love your ideas i think that's super cool i'm super yeah, excited about leader, having like really, a tiktok the video this was helping <laughs> T2 Shader coming right up. T2 Shader, man. T2 Beauty. That's one uh -huh. thing that Annie and I were talking about recently because the one frame of white, you know, is 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 fun. And it's it's become kind of an institution of our of our history of our culture. Um, but there's only a dozen or less entries. Um, yeah. So does it really have, you know? And we tried a couple of things. We we experimented with. Um, you got to be kidding me. We we experimented with trying to find something else that was that didn't take months and didn't require you know. A huge stuff and it didn't require yeah. a thesis level understanding of stuff it's all super intimidating though too i mean oh, like dude, it's, it's super it's intimidating what was it like greg paul's thing a couple years ago. oh god yeah. you know what i mean it's like i can never top that i'm never i gonna think be able to there's do a it. there's got to be a way to even the playing field and maybe invite more people and i think maybe amanda you were saying something level about or something like that well why don't we just provide elements be like look here are five elements yeah. Do this. Do something with these five elements. That's and now right everybody the has the same. Everybody, even though one frame of my, white is theoretically starting from the same place, it's totally not because it's like, here's the earth. Do something cool. How about like if you corner people and be like, you so working with restrictions as an artist, I find that really like it's going to be it, better it, for it the gets you going. It's better. Yeah. I think to have a restriction. Yeah. If you're like, OK, here are these five things or here are these three things. Yeah. do something with these three things i think and then you'll end up with i think bottom line is you'll end up with something with more people feeling like they can okay i can grasp this yeah, yeah i've never yeah. once really felt like i was like okay i've got an idea i'm gonna do this one frame right here we go it's like i watch them and then i'm like i'm cool yeah cool. you have to <laughs> think of every single thing when it's that wide open of a playing field of nothing it's, it's like too, create something from nothing it's too way, big yeah, yeah. yeah. Limit, limit the montage is too big well. I think, I think, well, I think it's like twofold. I think, yeah, it can be intimidating that it is like an empty canvas, right? That's always intimidating when you have an empty canvas and that's where you're starting from. But if you want to leverage that, like this group is called Logic Live, right? Maybe you change the timeline and you make it a live thing, like stream the people doing the thing so that you can see flame it. battle. Share it. A stream battle. Yeah, like a flame battle. Like, honestly, I feel yeah. like people would tune in to see people doing something with a cloud. That's, that's actually cool. really cool. It's still a senior <laughs> thing in a way. I would watch, I would yeah. watch the fuck out of it. I'd be that. sitting there commenting. <laughs> I would be sitting there. Because then if you don't feel like being in it, you could have people outside as like customers just commenting. I would just be yeah. shit talking yeah. to people the whole time. Oh, you really <laughs> touch that? You gonna use that node? Really? No, 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 no. The yeah, shit, the shit talking like, is required. You're just yeah. Yeah. my pants right there. Yeah, like being in a couple like, session, like, having to get something done really quickly. <laughs> yeah, but that's but way like more scary. Ten minutes to think about yeah, it. It's scary. Like, everybody's like, watching. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm with Amanda on this one. It was scary. I'm like, what do I do? I'm done. Log out. Yeah. That's I'm trying to do a couple. Call it I'm like trying to do a couple Houdini pizza battle pizza where they set up a yeah. theme and go through it. Bringing it full circle there, Andy. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs>
It's yeah, but I'm with a man. Yeah, though, guys, I don't want to go up against anyone. Wow. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's super great. Everyone does really awesome shit. It's so cool. But I look at that and I'm just like, I don't know anymore. <laughs> you get the same no five goal. people okay, uh, who always enter frame uh, one frame of white and going in for it, and everyone else is really, yeah, believe it to you. Last year, the restriction thing is um, really good. We tried good, to though. mix it up last year with that, like, you know, you got to be kidding me challenge, which was providing everybody with the same materials you know it was the same why can't it be like the worst one wins or something like that i don't know <laughs> give the stick finger win. most embarrassed one <laughs> wins. That's yeah how many, how many entries how, andy how many entries did we get for you gotta be kidding me we got one we got one yeah provided, yeah uh, yeah uh and that, that was like a that was like a whole thing you know here's here's an aaf or xml here's the footage uh grant provided me with all that stuff which was awesome yeah. and then it was just like Take this in the most opposite direction you possibly yeah. could, you know. I think like this, doing should, it this should have been like a cuts only conform, and the client said, you know, I think there should be, you know, a flock of birds and lasers <laughs> and dinosaurs, and everybody should have nine eyeballs or something, you know. Um, I do like the aspect of trying to do it live. Do it live, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Live, Andy. I like the aspect. Mine's of gonna the take shit ten talking. hours. I think ten hours. Lolly, I think we've got to have you as like the shit talker in, in chief. Listen, man, I got you. I can shit talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> do it live i'm telling you that's the answer do it live give people right. make it like tournament style i'll, oh, no, there shit talk. I'll shit talk you myself we'll do, it's got to be like turn, tournament Wait, style is march madness, and like, madness like canceled a, and like yeah, a, probably logic madness probably logic it'll madness. be tournament style and like chopped you know like where you're going to be handy you're not going to know the elements you're going to be given until you yeah. you know you should make it like a yeah like, what did they call Iron Chef? Iron Iron Chef, and then you have the judges at the end judge at, when <laughs> yeah. you play it down, and it could be like Andy, like Grant and and Randy, and you guys could just look at it and just give like brutal. Somebody's got to be like the Simon Cow. Who's like the most morbid? <laughs> <out. laughs> like, you'll get paid. Anybody with an English accent that would like to be the can Simon I do cow. that? <laughs> well, we need, yeah, we, we need for it. Yeah, we need we need, <laughs> we need yeah, yeah, we need to represent some different accents, and it'll be set. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Iron Flame, yes, I like that name. All right. <laughs> one All right, one you got an idea for mobile phone video is the other way that you could go, can you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you could do subsector, like things that we've all run into, like you said, Will, like like someone gives you like the shittiest, crappiest thing that they need you to like track and put something into a screen or something, you know, like yeah, totally way off just so that it, it, it cause it's also if you understand it as an artist, it's like, oh, it's an inside joke. And people on the outside watching this thing, like not saying that I want people to fail on purpose, but like the, some of these things might be built that like you can't do it really. And so if where, someone where has to do it, it'd be fucking- We need like where? the lead up video too. The lead up video where someone's just like, I didn't know what to do, man. When they handed me the T-Rex <laughs> with like two tree stumps and I had to make arms out of it. I just wasn't sure what to do. Like we need some sort of lead up video that kind of explains <laughs> like- <laughs> Where it can get a little hard is it's, some guys know more about 3D and flame and there's and a 3D task. Than somebody else knowing more about color grading in Flame. Yeah, um, creativity is the said, idea. It doesn't that, matter what tool. Or maybe you yeah. match up like all the people that like are horrible with color and the other people that are horrible with like tracking. No, that's the whole. Stuff. That's yeah. the best part. Watch them yeah. burn. Everybody, that's that's everybody entertainment, it. people. It's yeah, fucking entertainment. Burn. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, Randy. You want to see people burn, and if you suck at 3D in Flame, then you'll awesome. get better after you're embarrassed in front of everyone. Like Gordon Ramsay's yeah, show doesn't work if they're not kitchen nightmares. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, well, then true. no one's gonna hire true. me after this. <laughs> like, no, like, people will hire you. People will hire you. There's no. We'll, we'll pay fine. someone else to pixelate your face over the video. At the You're trying to <laughs> out of an ant's ass. There you go. And I Just can't. Do it. Never work again. <laughs> the you know how, much, how much trash work I have out in the world that I don't want people to see. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Everybody's got yeah. trash work out there. I think if 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 someone put something was 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 giving a shit and making the community better, um, I don't give a shit what it is. You know what I mean? Like, awesome. You're 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 leaning in hard, so that's all I think that matters. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you, plus, we'll give you a certificate. We'll give you a genuine, Ooh. a genuine <laughs> certificate that says you know these uh, opinions don't necessarily represent the official yeah. opinions of Amanda yeah. Elliott. Only it'll those. It'll kind of be like a safe harbor statement. Yeah, exactly. We'll just put a legal on the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. This artist is not shit. 
<laughs> and it won't be horsey. It must not reflect paint, my yeah. real work. Yeah, yeah, right. you know, one of the hardest things is going to be, we're all professionals and we want the best. Speak for yourself, to... Simon. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yes. And I'm John. Oh, John, where'd you go? <laughs> I'm over here. Oh, you're I'm on the page. Saying, oh, sorry. We, we know that we want to make the best pixels on the screen, so it'll be hard to let something trashy go out. Well, we then you, go, you got 30 minutes. Uh, that's, got, that's the game. Exactly. Wouldn't it, yeah. wouldn't it be great? It doesn't have to be like perfect. Like, it just like, has to be done. it out, man. It'll be fun. I think it's to see people with tons of experience fail because they spent too much time nitpicking details. Like, that's part of the thing. You've got 20 minutes. Yeah, sure. You needed an hour to make it look beautiful. But, like, it's part of the challenge, part of the entertainment. Embrace the fail. Oh, yeah. we can also change it up. It's like take a Tylenol PM and then go, or maybe the one where well, you that- put your head on the bat <laughs> and you spin around on the bat and then you hope yeah. and go on your flame. That's, well, that's what we'll do. No, 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 no. Make, make him do it. Make him do it using Ooh. RGS. All right, so, so a yeah. time we should do like a Queen's Gambit style, like take turns in the clock. Like well, people like get back get back to Vegas for a minute, right? Do a drunk compositing episode, you know? Well, thank you very much, man. I will just say you had to take off. Happy holidays, buddy. Yeah, happy holidays, folks. Good seeing you all. Thank you for everything. Good holidays, Will. Yeah. Thank you, Will. I will. Yeah, and give our love to everybody on the dev team. Will do. Bye, Matt. Oh, Tim. I just loaded up. Uh, oh, sorry, Will and Tim. Is Will gone? Will's gone. Oh, Will just gone. <laughs> um, that plugin that uh, Will just mentioned about yeah. the text. Is anyone using the blue? What was it called again? Blue something. New, new blue. blue VFX. New blue. Title Text, Pro. Title tool for in, in OFX. Anybody oh, using it? I haven't seen that, no. I just loaded it up and it actually works quite okay in plain batch OFX. So Will was saying how um, that has improved a lot and, that, and it looks like it works now. When I loaded it a few years ago, it didn't work in OFX very well, but it was okay as a standalone app. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting if people are hardcore about text tool. Um, I'll try it tomorrow. Could, yeah, could be a good uh, substitute. I gave up on the text tool a long time ago. What was that again? What is it? It's an OFX um, plugin. It's, it's called Blue Titler Pro. Uh, well, it's called Titler Pro, and it's at newblueeffects.com apparently. That's it. Yeah, I just installed it. And it I just, in, I just put it in the chat. So. Oh, thanks, man. Well, I want to, um, I want to share with you guys uh, a message that I got from Ivar's brother this morning. Um, this was really, really beautiful. He sent me a message and he sent me some pictures uh, about, or rather from, from the uh, funeral for Ivar. Um, and he told me that uh, before the funeral, they had a, a requiem for Ivar, uh, celebrated in their church, and it was very solemn and emotional. And that the lovely uh, lines that were written in the community about his brother were read aloud at the funeral. And uh, Ansgar and uh, Jesper from, uh, from Logic were there, and they spoke about Ivar. And uh, he did send me some pictures that I wanted to share with everybody. see here they had his don't worry shirt and like a quintessential picture of Ivar (laughs) which is just beautiful that's awesome The first time I looked at this, I did not see <laughs> Mario sitting in the flowers. And that just made it a million times better. Love it. I just I... Mm. 
So yeah, definitely an enormous loss for this year. And I uh, wanted to thank Sven for sending that stuff over. And uh, hmm. yeah, I don't. Uh, to, I saw John had put in the the text here. I I, I don't have any other info about uh, about like specifics about Ivar. Just uh, uh, that his heart stopped. Um, but if I do hear anything, I'll certainly let you guys know. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for coming on today. I, I really do think that you know this kind of little uh, forum we should do maybe regularly, maybe even you know do it once a month just for, for the chance to talk and chat. Uh, oh, I'm getting there's a lot of there's thumbs up happening in the gallery here, so we'll definitely do that. Um, hey, Mark, welcome, man. Mark got on the last flight out to Fiji, so I'm glad uh, to see that you made it there, man. Before the the uh, the airlines were shut down, so. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, th you know, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for all that you've done this year to kind of help keep this community going. And, you know, everybody who volunteered uh, or may have been coerced to, you know, present on Logic Live, thank you. You know, it's always appreciated. And uh, I just wanted to ask everybody here, and uh, I'll, I'll mention it to the couple of people who had to leave. Um, uh, email me your address and I'll send you, I'll send you a mask. I'll send you a logic TV mask. Um, if you haven't already gotten one, so please do. And, uh, I know John's yours is in the mail. I did send that out. Thank you. Do you, do you mind if I ask a quick question to the everyone? Sure. Go um, ahead. um, I'm, I used to work with a gentleman by the name of Simon Brewster back in the day. And I know he's a, he kept, became a flame up and went to the States and I haven't been able to work out where he's working and where he is. Does anybody know a Simon Brewster? Okay, this is the challenge of Logic Live in 2021. Yes, I, yes, I do know. Um, I've known him in the past. I haven't, um, I think I've- He worked in I, London I've, as made, well. I, th I think I, I may have chatted with him recently uh, online, oh, wow. but uh, yeah, I think it's on LinkedIn. I think that's where I've, where I, yeah, but I, he, he was, um, he was, you know, one of the big uh, freelancers here, you know, in the past. So well, he, he, I, 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 I would bump the, into him now and again. He, he was my uh, mentor. He was, he, I okay. actually learned everything from him. <laughs> Back right. in the day when he was in Sydney, Australia, working at a company called um, VTC. Right. Where we were a, a very much an analog, uh, you know, an analog video house, you know. Do you know Adam Howard? No, oh, I don't okay. know Adam Howard. No, right. but Simon, yeah, he was, he was worked there for a few months and then he went off to England and I then think he went off to the States. So I haven't yeah. been able to. There were, down. there were several Simon um, flame artists in, in LA for, for a while and everybody got very confused. I think there's like at least Andy's four, now. four or five. <laughs> What's that? It's like Andy's now. Yeah. Andy's. Yeah. And one other gentleman, if I could quickly ask, um, uh, what was his name? What is this? Um, Tim Davies. Tim oh, yeah, he's a Kevin. Yeah, he's a Kevin. I think in the Simon Brewster of Brewster Parsons. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, right. so he was at Brewster Parsons, which he was, is a small yeah. shop in Venice, and then I think he left, yeah. and Darcy Parsons kept going, yeah. and then Darcy Kevin, right? teamed up with Tim Davies and Sue Troyan to make Kevin, oh, right. and they're right. now. I think yeah, I used to work with Tim as well back in uh, Sydney, Australia. Yeah, he was my boss at the mill. Great right. guy. Yeah. Uh, white hair, yeah? Short white yeah. hair. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I've, I've been in touch with him every so often. There you well, go. thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming on Thanks. today. And uh, I want to wish you all a very happy holidays. Thank you for everything again this year. And uh, definitely send me your email address or send me an email at, at uh, Logic Live. I'm sorry, logicvfx at gmail.com. Hold on, let me correct that and put it in the, in the chat at gmail.com. And I will send you out a mask. And uh, thanks for all the suggestions. And, you know, I think I'm kind of intrigued by this kind of live challenge, <laughs> by a live, like, you know, Flame Gladiator challenge. I think that could be kind of fun. I know we've, it, it's something that has been talked about in the past. Um, but I think that could make for a damn fun Sunday. Pretty so genius. Like maybe we can get that going. Do it, Andy. Do it. Don't talk about it. Do it. Do it. <laughs>
and they will do it with you. Yeah, oh, right. That's the thing that's going to happen. It's going to have to be me. I'm going to have to be me versus somebody, you know. But you know, the best part about that is if it's me versus somebody, then I won't have to coordinate. All the <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll have to do that as well. Ooh, yes, I like this. <laughs> I like this. We'll figure it out. We'll definitely figure it out. And um, I'll, I'll, we're taking a couple weeks off, but I will definitely announce, uh, you know, on the forum and on Logic, on Facebook, what we've got planned. I've got a couple uh, for the new year. I got a couple of episodes lined up already for January, but I want to flesh that out a little bit and uh, just keep the suggestions coming. And, and thank you, everybody. Okay. I'm going to play the goodbye music. Thank you, Andy. You thank it, you. Man. Thank you, Andy. Happy holidays, Happy holidays everybody. everybody. Happy holidays. Bye, guys. Happy holidays. Bye, 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 everybody. Bye, bye, bye.